picture tells the story of tanks and tankers, a story never told before. It begins in what the Army calls an assembly area near saint lô France, July 6, 1944, where the 3rd Armored Division, the Spearhead Division, is preparing to go into combat as a unit for the first time. America's Iron Fist, poised and ready for the Sunday punch, the knockout blow. The tankers, the aggressive chip-on-the-shoulder men who rode and fought the iron buggies were well briefed, knew what was coming. Command had chosen them to form the stabbing spearhead in the drive to reach and pierce the Siegfried line. The tankers counted the minutes as they armed for each hour and waited for the order to mount up. At the very point of the spearhead, lead-off tank California Jane, Staff Sergeant Joe Davis commanding. Five men chosen to lead the way into Germany, if they could make it. And backing them up, the other four iron bellies of Lieutenant Rawson's platoon, the barbed tip of the spearhead, the top platoon of Captain Horner's Company C. Got her all gassed up, ready to go? Right, sir. Check the radio. Right. Okay, sir. Lamb check. How soon are you going to have a set to go? She'll be ready to roll when you are, Lieutenant. I'm the last man in this army who wants to hold up this stinking war. I want to get it over with, and I got a reason, too. Okay, Lamb check, okay. Hand them up, Danny. Remember, that's no pigskin. Besides, Heidi didn't play for the Fighting Irish. Yes, sir. You think we'll be moving out soon, Lieutenant? Should be any minute now. See you keeping your boys busy. Yeah, I thought I'd better. I figured out a way to stow some extra shells. The boys are kind of nervous, waiting. Aren't we all? Oh, Lieutenant, would you mind censoring this for me? Anything sensible in it? No. It's just to my wife, Jane. I'll see that it gets mail. An estimated 2,000 heavy bombers, 700 mediums, 500 fighter bombers comprise the Air Armada raining bombs on an area less than 15 miles square in the San Lo Perrier salient. Although for obvious security reasons, details have not been released officially, it is hinted that this saturation bombardment may be but the overture to the greatest combined air-ground operation since our forces first landed in Normandy only 40 days ago. Stand by for further bulletins. This is BBC in London. I, I come down here. Hand me that 5 8 wrench. Lean in here and learn something. You got enough on my mind. Jerks wrecking them faster than I can fix them. Target. That stinking brother-in-law of mine running my garage into the ground and me stuck in this stinking army. Gotta have you wished on me, too. Alligator pliers. I must have been nuts. Promise your mother I'd bring you back alive. I'll do it, too, if I have to break your neck. <laughs> Kill her! Go on, tell him to kill her! Move! Lame Jack says kill her! Turn her off! Boy, what I'd give to be sitting where you're sitting when we start to roll. You know, I got news for you, Ike. Whatever you'd give for my job, you can buy it for less. I got news for you. I'd take it in a minute if Lamchak had let me. Ah, that Lamchak. It ain't the tankers that win this stinking war. It's the mechanics, says Lamchak. I fix them. All the tankers do is fight them and wreck them. Stick with me, kid, and ten years from now, you can be working in my stinking garage. A full-fledged, two-bit, greasy-faced, no-account mechanic. Like me, says Lemchek. Says Lemchek. Joe, a touch of California to cheer you and your crew on your birthday. With all my love, always, Jane. Think you can find a place to stow this? I've already got the spot picked out, Joe. Safe as money in the bank. Sure your boys wouldn't sooner split it now before we show up? Listen, Joe, you said we'd wait till we get to Germany. That's what I told my wife. That may be a long wait. We're not in any hurry. Marconi? Not at all. Kemp? Not me. Heine? 
Germany will be soon enough for many things. Start your column rolling, Captain. Yes, sir. Good luck, Bob. Thanks. Good luck, Rawson. Thanks. All right, let's go. Mount up! Pull up your socks, boys. This is it. Let's roll. Let's move, boys. Captain Horner to Lieutenant Rawson. Move out. Okay, Captain. First platoon. Move out. Okay, Lieutenant. All right, Cam, let's roll. Sergeant. Tanks and tankers began to write a new page in the history of war. Heads up, Lieutenant. Soft shoulder on the right. Soft shoulder on the right. Number five, pick it up, 20 yards. Able Land Vega five to three four. Able Land Vega five to three four. Over. Have you reached your IP? Have you reached your IP? Over. Are you still moving? Are you still moving? Over. We're still moving. Order to Rawson. Increase your speed five miles. Sergeant, pick it up five. OK, Lieutenant. Kemp, pick it up five. Boy, keep pouring it on like this, and we'll be fraternizing with the Fraulein's in no time. We ain't that close to the Siegfried line, I hope. No, but we're sure out in the open and running high, wide, and down the middle. Sarge. Sarge, Krauss. Krauss on the left. Krauss on the left, 300 yards. Heidi, give me some high explosive. Let her eat. <laughs> Cease firing. Let the infantry handle that. Lieutenant Johnson, take two squads over and clean up what's left, then join us on the road. Lieutenant Rawson, keep moving. Davis, move out. OK, Kemp. You heard it, Lieutenant. A nice spot, Marconi. It's one of you. I keep on telling him to keep his head away from the gunman I fire. Hey. Yeah? We took care of those crowds, didn't we, Heine? Hardly anybody got killed at all. Cam, slow it down. This road could be mine. Well, if it is, Joe, we'll be the first to find out. Stop that panther. Camp, back off. Back off. Let her eat. Man, we can't put a dent in that tank. Marconi, load armor piercing. Tiny, our AP bounced stuff. We can't knock her out. Davis, you can't knock out a panther from the front. Fire a white phosphorus. Blind him. Marconi, load white phosphorus. Machine there, fire. Try to 
knock it off on the flank. Tank number two, hold the road. Hold the road. Marconi, Kemp, Marconi, Kemp, do you hear me? Get out of there. Why don't you answer? Get out of there. Joe! Joe! Marconi, Kemp! Nach rechts, fire! Marconi! Marconi! Kemp, get out of there! Kemp's dead! Machine Feuer! Joe! Joe! Second section. Fire! Cease firing. That's got it. Hold your fire! Sergeant Kellogg, take over. I'm gonna see what damage that panther did. Hold oh on, Sarge. The medics will be here soon. You're not gonna quit on us, are you, Joe? You can't do that. How we get along without you? Joe, you remember that bottle of champagne? We're gonna drink that, all of us together, in Germany. We're going to back the battalion aid station, Lieutenant. <laughs> Look at it. Look at that. Still want to be a tank driver? That night, the tanks moved off the roads and coiled in the fields. No vacations with pay. Repair or replace. Fix it or chunk it. Then, ready for tomorrow, you did anything to keep your mind off what you'd seen before the sun went down. Only just was my brother-in-law's neck. Where'll I find Captain Horner? CP's right over there. Captain Horner! Hey, Corporal. Come on, Sleeping Beauty. Come on, on your feet, trooper. Hey! What? There's a war arm. Trouble with you, company clerks. If you ain't AWOL, you're drunk. If you ain't drunk, you're sleeping, and vice versa. Look, Sergeant. Never mind. Where's the old man? You want to see Captain Horner? He wants to see me. Oh, does he? What about? He needs a new staff sergeant. I'm it. Well, come on, let's get organized. Look, sergeant, we are organized. I happen to be Captain Horner. Staff Sergeant F.A. Sullivan reporting, sir. At ease. Nice meeting you, Captain. Colonel Matthews thinks a lot of you. Oh, the Colonel and me was in the old First Armor together, when he was just a captain. Staff Sergeant Sullivan, huh? Yes, sir. Francis Aloysius Sullivan. Oh, well, uh, I'd sure appreciate it if we could uh, sort of keep that confidential. Just between the captain and me? Well, Sullivan, 
We'll try and make you happy while you're with C Company. We lost a good platoon sergeant today. One of the best. Your confidence, you can step into his shoes. I ain't had no complaints in a year and a half of fighting in North Africa and Italy. All right, Sullivan, I'm giving you what's left of Sergeant Davis's crew. You draw a new tank from ordnance. Let's see, you'll need a driver. I'll assign you oh, one. Oh, uh, 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 begging the captain's pardon, but my driver's one man I'd like to know. Mind if I choose my own? Got anybody in mind? Yes, sir. I want Tucker. Tucker? Yes, sir. I'm throwing the book at Tucker. Was that old... That old trooper been drinking again, sir? As far as I know, Sergeant, he never stopped. And you want Tucker? Yes, sir. I've had him before. I can handle him. Is there anything you can't handle, Sergeant? The MPs have him back at division rear. You'll need this note to get him out. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh... Is there any chance of borrowing the captain's peep to pick him up in? Why, of course, Sergeant. Would you like to have me drive you? No, sir. I'm a very good driver myself. When you get back, report to Lieutenant Ross. Yes, sir. It's a good day. It's a good, good day. I never thought I'd be happy to see your ugly face again. Nice to have you aboard, Sully. Nice to have you aboard. You fight him. I drive him. We both lose. Happy times. And they'll stay happy, Trooper, long as you lay off the joy juice. For the duration, Trooper, for the duration. Lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. Hey, what are you doing? Trooper, your cure has begun as of now. Ah, oh, Sully! Sully, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well. It's gonna be a long, dry war. Tucker. Stop her. Watch it, Tucker. Howdy, Pat. Oh, no, not you again. Yep. Just goes to show you. Can't tell who you're going to bump into if you just hang around this little old war long enough. But there ought to be some limits. The last time I saw you, I hoped it was the last time. Oh, now, don't go giving me that. I heard you when them medics is loading me into that there meat wagon. Oh, doctors, Trooper Sullivan's bleeding bad. How long you been covering this here outfit, Pat? All the way from England. All the way from England? Mm hmm Well, I should have joined up a long time ago. Look at all the time we've been wasting. You haven't changed a bit. That's telling the old Trooper, Pat, that's telling them. Get your head back down your hole. Oh, come on, Sully. Let's be gentlemen, at least while the lady's present. Would you by any chance be in the market for a shove? The Jeep would. My battery's dead. Your battery ain't dead. I still get a charge out of you. See you in Germany. Not if I see you first. Sully, mm. kiss me. Then get down in there. <laughs> You're telling your folks about the sergeant, honey? Yeah. Yes, I am. Trying to tell them. What'd you say? There was even so good as wise. 
ebenso tapfer als er gütig war. Ohne ihn sind wir wie verlassene Kinder. My father and mother understand better in German. What does it mean in American? He was as good as he was wise, as kind as he was brave. We are lost children without him. Fine, sorry looking troop of drag tails if I ever seen one. What's the matter with you? So you lost a tank. Well, they're still making them. And they ain't gonna call off this war just on account of your sergeant. Who are you? My name's Sullivan. Staff Sergeant Sullivan. I'm your new boss. And this here's our new tank. Make you feel any better, you can paint California G number two all over the side of it. I don't care. We're moving out of here in 10 minutes. Now let's snap into it. On your feet. Come on, I said, on your feet. Which one of you guys is a gunner? I am. My name is Heinrich Reinberger, Corporal. Kraut, huh? You sure you're in the right army? Yes, Sergeant. I'm in the right army. Who loads for you? I do. PFC Jerry Whitehouse. How fast can you load? Sergeant Davis never had any complaints. Who are you? PFC Danny Kalowitz, driver. Assistant driver. Tucker! That does my driving. Tucker? He just got kicked out of the company. Yep, and I just kicked him right back in again. Look, trooper. I don't like a lot of unnecessary conversation, so I'm going to tell you this just once. Tucker, I know. You, I got to find out about. If you're good enough to ride with Sullivan, fine. If you ain't, there are going to be some changes made. My tank and my crew is going to be out in front all the way. First across the Siegfried line and first into Germany. That's the way Sullivan operates. Sergeant Sullivan. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Now get this here gear stowed in the tank. Hey! That belongs to Sergeant Davis. Well, take it over to supply and dump it. The rest of you load that gear. On the double. Didn't Captain Horner tell you to report to me? Well, I was just fixing to, Lieutenant, but I wanted to get my crew organized first. Your crew? Come on, Sergeant. Had a little trouble with the crouch, Lieutenant? Yeah, a little. Know just how you feel. Felt the same way myself. First tank I lost. But you'll get used to it. That's encouraging. Like the man said, you can't make hash without chopping up the meat and potatoes. Weren't you being unnecessarily hard on Sergeant Davis's men under the circumstances? Look, Lieutenant, Sergeant Davis ain't here no more. But you are. Look, Sullivan, I've shaped and hammered this platoon for two and a half years. And no glory-chasing show-off is going to come in and get my men killed just to get himself some more medals and a promotion. You got me a little bit wrong, Lieutenant. I ain't getting nobody killed. 98% of the guys in cemeteries got there because they made mistakes, which I don't do. Davis never made a mistake in his life. All right. We'll consider him part of that 2% that's just plain unlucky. Me, I make my own luck. And that goes for my crew, if they're good enough to ride with me. I'm the head, and they're the arms and legs. They move when I tell them to move, and they don't move when I don't tell them. Who puts in the heart, Sergeant? The what? That's all, Sergeant. Except for one thing. I'm gonna be watching you. Everything you do and every move you make. You do that, Lieutenant. All right, mount up. I thought I told you to stow that gear. Stow that gear! Get on it. Come on, get on it! Come on, snap into it. Snap into it! So I watched Sullivan. Spearhead tankers changed the rules of war, but Sullivan never changed. Through enemy-occupied country, we traveled as much as 90 miles a day. We never stopped, only when gas and ammunition ran out. The tanks rested only long enough for their supply lines to catch up. Sullivan, he never rested, never gave his men a break, and never called a job well done. He fought as one-man war, 
All business, no fun. Coutance, Marigny, Morten, Mayenne. Back to Morten when the enemy counterattacked. Five days of that, and von Klug's 7th Army was on the run. Argentan fillets, the Seine, Chateau Thierry, Soissons. Roll them, keep them rolling, and we roll. He couldn't wait for the flail tanks to clear the minefields before us. And he was always out in front and kept on riding his crew as hard and recklessly as if he really believed men like tanks are made of nothing but coal iron and machinery. What's the matter, Lieutenant? Crouch blew the bridge a mile up the road. I can't hear you. What? The Crouch blew the bridge about a mile up the road. Oh. Thanks, Lieutenant. Sullivan to Rawson. Over. This is Rawson. Over. Benelli says the Crouch blowed up the bridge up ahead of us. Over. Get the tanks off the road. I'll check with Captain Horner. Be down to see you. Over. Right, Lieutenant. Over and out. Get us off the road to the left, Tucker. Able Land Baker 5 to 3 4, over. This is 3 4, over. What's the delay up there, Captain? What's holding us up? Over. The crowds flew a bridge, Colonel. We're trying to find a place to ford the river. Over. How long is that going to take? Over. I don't know, Colonel. Reconnaissance is still out. Over. Let's get some action, Captain. Over. Captain Horner calling Lieutenant Rawson. Over. Captain Horner calling Lieutenant Rawson. Over. This is Captain Horner calling Lieutenant Rawson. Over. Yeah, Captain. Where's Lieutenant Rawson? Over. He ain't got back yet, Captain. He's still out on recon. Over. Did he run into any trouble? Any shooting? Over. Didn't hear any. Over. All right. When the lieutenant gets back, have him check with me. I want to know if I'll need the engineers. Over now. OK, Captain. I'll tell him. Hey, Sergeant, why don't you tell the captain we need the engineers? Tell him to drop the paratroopers, bring up the infantry, send in the wax. <laughs> Anything, just as long as we don't have to move. You want to go to Germany? Yes, Danny, I must go to Germany as soon as possible. Maybe then, too late. Too late? For what? It's a personal matter, Danny. You know, I don't get you, Heine. Tell me something. How do you really feel about shooting crowds? I try to have no feeling about it, Danny. Yeah. But I bet it's still pretty tough, killing your own people. They are not my people. I'm an American, just like you or any other member of our crew. Sure. Hey. What? You know, the sergeant's been gone for over 40 minutes. So? So, something's wrong. Something's happened to him. I hope it did. The way that guy's been riding us, you, me, Heine. But he's efficient. He has made us better soldiers. Yeah. You got him in, he takes pretty good care of us. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, like the sheriff of a chain gang. Put it back. For what back? Hey, Danny, where'd you take your basic training? Fort Knox, Kentucky. You know that. Oh, yeah. How'd you like Louisville? Wonderful town. Really enjoyed that southern hospitality. Yeah. Have a count them? Count what? On the way downtown, there's six of them. Six of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. What buildings? Whiskey distilleries. Put it back. Hmm? Oh. You mean this? Yes. Hey, look, look. Here comes the Sarge. All right, mount up. Let's go, on, Dick. Ross and the Captain Horner. OK, Lieutenant, what'd you find out? There's a streak of hard rock bottom that angles toward the other side, above the bend. How deep is it? Not too deep. We can get the tanks across. All right. Move out. All right, Captain. All right, Sergeant, let's roll. All right, move out, Tucker. 
Pick him up. Let's move out. Watch it. Season! Season! Up. machine gun, right? Right, it was sweet shooting. But if I hadn't kept you guys in this tank, you would have been dead. That 88 would have murdered you on the ground. None of you never try to abandon this tank unless I give you the order. If you do, I'll shoot you myself. Uh, what's the matter with you? He burned his hands changing the gun barrel for me. I forgot to put on my asbestos gloves. What do you want me to do? Recommend you for a medal? Look, Sergeant, the guy's hurt. Next time, he'll remember to wear his gloves. Hollowitz, where are you going? I'm going to fish Corporal Henderson's body out of the river. You're going to stay here. Quartermaster will take care of his dog tags. Sergeant Sullivan, come over here. See what damage of mine did. Tucker, get over there and see what you can salvage from Henderson's tank. Heine, get the limb check and have him get to work on this right away. Sergeant! Yes, Lieutenant? Why didn't you answer me in your radio? Sorry, Lieutenant, but I kind of had my hands full. As a platoon sergeant, you're supposed to keep me informed so the platoon can fight as a unit. You gave us no information whatever. You were so busy riding your crew, being the big I am, that you got two tanks knocked out, two good men wounded, Corporal Henderson killed. 
You're no platoon sergeant. You ought to be driving a one-man tank in your own personal army. I didn't get Henderson killed. He was helping me knock out that 88. Look, Lieutenant, when you've been chasing Krauts as long as... It... Lieutenant, if I hadn't got that 88, you wouldn't have no men left to mud. Sergeant Sullivan got it. That's the kind of tank fighter tactics we need, Sergeant. Initiative, timing, the ability to think and fight simultaneously. Well, uh, Lieutenant got it a little wrong, sir. I, I give a lot of credit to my crew. I'm really getting them whipped into shape. That's fine, Sergeant. You just keep up the good work. All right, Lieutenant. Let's roll. Yes, sir. Sergeant, take care of Corporal Henderson's body. Catch up with a column as soon as possible. I'll do that, Lieutenant. Hey, I! Hey! Hey, what's the matter? You deep or something? What's the idea taking off on me? Ain't I got enough on my mind without having to chase you? I saw it, Lamchek. I saw it with my own eyes. I watched the whole battle. Yeah, yeah, sure, and you could have got yourself killed. Come on, we got to get out of here and fix up that stinking Sullivan stinking tank. That gun, Lamchek, that 88, it's murder. And the best we got, 75s, that ain't right. Come on, come on. That's what got Sergeant Davis. Camp, Corporal Henderson. It ain't right we gotta go up against the 88. Somebody ought to tell somebody. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a good idea. Somebody should walk right up to a four-star general and say it ain't right. Come on. Um, I gotta go get my G. Hey! Hey! Hey, come back here! Hey, Lemsek, take it easy, take it easy. Them crowds got ears, you know. Big, long, fat ears. Yeah, and they can hear us for a mile off. For all we know, they could be closing in on us right now. There could be thousands of them between us and the infantry. And probably are, by the way we've been bypassing them. What do you want to do? Quit and go hightailing it for the rear like that kid? How's that radio? Marconi thinks it's not going to work, Sergeant. Look, Sullivan, I ain't going to listen to any more of your stinking wisecracks about Ike. He's a good kid. If he hadn't went and run out on us, you'd have had that job done by now. Now get at it. When I'm ready. And if Ike ain't here, it's because he's got a good reason for not being here. And when he gets back, we'll get your stinking job done faster. If we feel like it. The crowds ain't got him. Oh! Where do you think you're going? Is the general in there? Yeah, so what? I want to talk to him. You want to what? I want to talk to the general. Sam Smooth. Says Lemchek. About what? It's personal. Go on, get lost. Get lost before they come after you with a butterfly net. I tell you, I gotta talk to the general. It's important. What's the trouble? Oh, no trouble, sir. This kid's kind of battle wacky. I am not. Are you the general? Yes, son. Can I please talk to you, general? Of course. Go on inside, out of the rain. PFC George Eisenhower reporting, sir. Maintenance, C Company, Task Force Matthews. At ease. Eisenhower? I bet they call you Ike. Yeah. I mean, yes, sir. Sometimes they call me General. Well, sit down, General. Now, what's on your mind? Speak up, son. Don't be nervous. Generals are human beings. They have jobs, they have bosses, and they can be fired. Now, what's your trouble? Well, sir, it's about those German 88s. I saw it with my own eyes. Our 75s bounce off those panthers like, like spit. And then wham, goes an 88 right through us, and we're dead. It's murder. Cigarette? No, thank you, sir. I, I don't smoke. Lemchek won't let me. Lemchek? Uh, he's my boss. 
Oh, the lamb check don't know where I am. I better get I back. relax, son. Necessary, I think I can square you with lamb check. Well, you don't know lamb check. Hmm. Now, about those 88s. Well, sir, you see, it's like this, General. The muzzle velocity of an 88 is 3,900 feet per second. Now, our 75 is only 2,800 feet per second. They got five inches of armor, and we only got about three. So you see, General, that's why ours bounce off. That's why your friends are getting killed. Mine, too, Ike. Then why don't somebody do something? Well, we're trying to, Ike. Now, we have bigger tanks coming through, Ike. Better armor. Tanks are on the way, mounting 90s. 90s, Ike. That won't bounce off of those Panthers. That'll go right through. I didn't know that, General. Well, the Krauts don't know about it either, but they're about due to start finding out. <laughs> Gee, that's swell. General, would it be all right if I told our boys about the 90? It'd make them feel a whole lot better about the war. Sure, tell them. And tell your particular friends, Ike, the very first 90 I get, I'm going to send it to you. To me? You mean that, General? For real? For real, like. Oh, gee, I, I, I sure am glad we had this talk, General. Gee, General, I, I, Excuse me. God bless you. Thank you. Now, you better get back and get some dry clothes. We don't want good tankers like you getting sick on us. Gee, General, thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, General. Hold your fire, Lem Check. Wait till I get closer. Give it to them when they come around this bend. All right, get ready. No! No! It's me, sir! It's Ike! Where you been, riding around the middle of the night in a jeep like this in the rain? You could have got yourself shot. With the crowds all around you, ain't you got no sense at all? What's the matter with you? Shut up, Lemchek. Where you been? Where we been? I've been talking to the general. You've been what? I've been talking to the general. Oh, he's nuts. Get to work, both of you. You heard him. Move! <laughs> Hey, you've been out in the rain. You catch cold easy. Hey, you got a little fever. Ah, oh, I'm okay. The general says he's got problems just like me. And he has. The kid's talking out of his head. He's wacky. I heard that. And I heard that. I tell you, I did talk to the general. Why, he put his arm around my shoulder and he said to me, General? The general called me general. Come on, come on. Well, let me finish. And the general told me a big secret. He said, we've got a new tank with 90s coming through. With 90s? Can you imagine what we'll do to them crocs? Yeah, yeah, we'll murder them. Come on, I need you. we got work to do. And you know what he said? He said the first 90 he can send up, he's going to send to me personally. And the general called me a good tanker. He's psycho. I heard that. And he said, if I want to drive the 90, you'll fix it so I can. Looks like me and your pal, the general, is going to have some words about that next time we meet. I tell you, I'm giving you the facts. Come on, come on. Well, don't any of you guys believe me? Come on, get to work. Hey, hey, Sarge, look, you know, I've got a new 90 coming through. Now, maybe you and me could... <laughs> Soon time. We could make a deal. Get back to work. Sergeant, I hear another car coming on the road. Oh, 
Stewards, get down! Covered. Mishisen! Mishisen! Rose! Mit the handy ho! Heine! Rose! Zurückkommen! Schnell! Hände hoch! Mishisen! Tell him to hurry it up! Schnell! Hier raus! Tell him schnell. to keep them hands up! Hände hoch! Mishisen! Ich bin General Oberst von Kolber. Ich sage Sie, General von Kolber. Bringen Sie mich sofort zu Ihrem vorgesetzten Offizier. Ich wollte Sie zu unserem Superior Officer. I'm your superior. Ich war immer sehr, General. Dieser Mann ist sehr gefährlich. Er wird von nichts zurückschrecken, um zu erreichen, was er will. What do you stay in? I warn him, you are dangerous. I will stop at nothing. Better be what you said. Tucker, take him back to the tank and keep him there. I need look at them and see what they say. Hey, Sarge. What do you want? I just want to thank you for saving my life up on the hill. Thanks for nothing. Look, Halowitz, you're making it a habit of being stupid. Next time you get out in the open to challenge, I'm going to let him shoot you. Why, you know good. Let go. Let go of me. Let me hit him. Let me hit him. You miserable excuse for a human being. First chance I get, I'm putting in for a transfer. I'm getting out. I'm through. Go back to your post. What about that stuff, Heine? Kapral. Ist dieser Mann ein Angehöriger einer amerikanischen SS-Truppe? Das wäre eine alte Erklärung. Es gibt noch andere. You guys talk like kissing cousins. Shut up, Tucker. Go on, Heine. These are general staff orders. It says that many thousands of their elite divisions are retreating under orders to Mons in Belgium. When I mention Mons, the general begins to understand English. Ist das nicht richtig? Ich habe Ihnen keine Auskunft zu geben. He doesn't want to tell. Come on, talk. Eine Armee von 30.000, 50.000, 100.000 deutschen Soldaten. Die Elite aus unseren besten Divisionen, die euch einen blutigen Empfang bereiten. Wir ziehen uns aus Mons zurück. Doch an der Siegfriedstellung werden wir eine uneinnehmbare Festung bilden. 30.000, 50.000, 100.000, all of their elite divisions. They'll go from Mons to the Siegfried Line. Where they will form an impregnable garrison. That is correct. Ihr Yankees. Uh, Ihr Yankees habt ein unwahrscheinliches Glück gehabt. Doch an der Siegfriedstellung werdet ihr euer Genick brechen. Your Yankees have been unbelievably lucky, but you will break your neck when you reach the Siegfried line. Think that stuff's on the level? I'm sure of it. This is a very important strategic officer you've captured. He's personally decorated by Hitler. Und ich bin stolz darauf. Hi, Hitler! The Jodel Sergeant! Soldier. I got business with Captain Horner. What business? Mine. Captain Horner? Yes, Sergeant. This is General Von Kolber. General Von Kolber? Staff Sergeant Sullivan reporting, sir. At ease. I got a little present for the General. His name is Von Kolber. General Oberon, uh... General Oberst Rupertus Von Kolber. Yeah. He had these on him. They're very important, so I poured it on to get here. Could have put it on the radio, but I figured that if we knew something the crops didn't know about, no need telling them and tipping them off to the party. 
I looked at that stuff on the way over, and they'll be coming through about here, 15 miles south. But we can stop them if we hurry up. I'll figure out the move, Sergeant, if you don't mind. That's all. Has our G2 reported anything on von Hiking's 6th Luft off a of field division in the Paris Kampf Group? No, sir, not a thing. They haven't even been mentioned. Gentlemen, I know how thin our lines are spread, but these outfits have got to be stopped. At least until the infantry can catch up and take over. Be a lot better hitting them out in the open than it will be to have to blast them out of those pill boxes and emplacements behind the dragon's teeth later on. If they get through to the Siegfried line, it's no telling how long they'll hold us up. I want every available man, vehicle, and gun on the move to close this gap. Cooks, clerks, maintenance men, anybody who can use a weapon. Tanks out of commission. That can fire and fight, I want them towed into position as roadblocks. Now, are there any questions? No, sir. No, sir. All right, let's get rolling. Right. Hey, Sarge, how'd you make out with the big brass? Let him check. I thought I told you to get on this. I have been on it. And Sergeant Sullivan, it breaks my heart to inform you that it is my final opinion and the opinion of all other mechanics in maintenance that you have ridden that stinking heap into a burned out pile of junk. It is fini, kaput, done. Which means, I hope, so is Sullivan. Come on, get you something hot to eat. Lem check. Hey, Sarge, I still got that tank with a 90 coming through. The Lem one the general is sending me. You want to make and get that me deal? a new tank and get it fast. Sergeant Lemchek. <laughs> what? Put your T2 on to Sergeant Sullivan's tank and haul it. Haul it to work. You'll establish a roadblock with a road's fork here. The crowds start coming through. You ought to pinpoint targets for artillery. It'd be better if I could establish up here on higher ground where I can get some observation. Colonel Matthews prefers to have you here. Put a man with a radio at that point and transmit his reports on the appearance of any enemy elements in that area. The artillery will take it from there. No one-man army stuff this time, Sergeant. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then get moving. He can't. He ain't got no crew. They took off on him. Would you like to have an unprejudiced witness tell you why, Lieutenant? I know why, Lemchek. Get your T2 hooked on. Ike, move! Sullivan. I'm almost sorry for you. You've got 10 minutes to round up those men, if you can round them up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Irgendwelche Leute aus Stolberg. Sie sollten sich mal schämen. Wie knäht. Sie sind ein Landesverräter. Der wahre Verräter von Deutschland ist euer Abgott. Adolf Hitler. Heil Hitler. Sit down, Kram. Heini. Where's Kalowitz and Marconi? I, I don't know, Sergeant. Didn't I leave you in charge? Yes, Sergeant, but, but I had personal matters and... You ain't got no personal matters with these here krauts. Now get on back to that tank where you belong. Sergeant Tucker. Private Tucker. You missed me. Uh, Sully. Sully, look, let's be reasonable. I, uh, I haven't been feeling well lately. I think I got ulcers. Out. Ah, oh, Sully, look, we're, we're pals, ain't we? Huh? Out, pal. Oh, okay. Out. Oh, Hank! Hank! It ain't the duck so much. It's the cinnamon. We've been together since way back. You know, there were times, pal, when I never thought I'd last to sink a tooth into you. We should have stayed in the tank, Danny. Look, will you quit worrying about Sullivan? I wish this was Sullivan turning on a spit, sizzling, grease and meanness dripping. If that guy makes one more crack to me, so help me, just one! Kalowitz. What then? You get on back to that there tank. 
You too, Marconi. How much can you take, Jerry? How long are you going to go on riding a suicide seat for this no good, heartless... Look, Sullivan, the last time my friend stopped me, this time you're going to get it. <laughs> No, Kalowitz, we don't need no MPs. I can handle this. You're gonna stay right in my tank and right in my crew. And you're gonna think that up to now you've just been on a joyride. Now get on out of here. As the general had ordered, the gap began to close when the tanks were moved into position where their firepower could be concentrated. Big guns, little guns. If it could shoot, it was up on the line. The iron bellies that couldn't move by themselves were pulled into place by those that could. Some were exposed in field. Others were dug in. But however or wherever placed, all were set to hurt the enemy. There seemed nothing left to do but wait for the Germans to make their move. The Nazis had their work cut out for them. They tried to figure a way to get out of the pocket. They raced men and equipment to those sectors where there seemed a chance to dull the point of America's iron lance. And while the Germans planned, the men of Spearhead packed their steel fortresses with still more ammo, made last-minute changes in their position, prepared for the ambush by hiding their tanks, camouflaging the deadly line until it looked as peaceful as the landscape around them. Hide this air tank good, Kolowitz. Cover it so the crowds can't see it. Get that away from the gun muzzle. Marconi. Establish an observation post on the top of that rise over yonder. Contact me as soon as you see something. Now, what are you waiting for? Somebody to lead you by the hand? Go on, move. Go on, on the double. Go on. Take care of yourself. On the double. Kolowitz, get down on your gun. Tucker, fill the ready basket with AG. Ike, get up on your turret. Yeah, yeah, Sarge. Sarge, I'm up here, Sarge. I'm all set. Can you hear me? Over. Sarge. Can't you hear me? Over. Sure, I can hear you. And so can the Krauts, if there are any of them around. What's on your mind? Over. Nothing, Sarge. I can't see anything moving anywhere. Over. Keep your eyes open till you do. Sarge. Get the crowd students start coming through. Over. Just let me know where, when, and how many. Over. What if they spot me? Over. Then your worries will be over. Over. I just want to know what to do. Over. I don't care what you do. Pray, talk to yourself, but keep off the air till you got something to report. Over and out. Hey, Sarge, I hear something coming. I can't see what it is yet, but I can hear. Sounds like a whole army coming. Over. Keep your eyes open and your head down. Over. Yes, Sarge. I see him. It's Krauts coming around the bend about 200 yards out. Get set, Sarge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's all, Sarge. Seven. Over. They're only the point. There'll be more coming. This is Easy Beaker Zebra 38. To onset five. Over. This is onset five. Send your message. Over. This is 38. Concentration of enemy troops at control point. Fox 241, Love 391. We'll adjust. 
Over. This is on set five. We are ready here. Over. Stand by. Over. Here they come. Here they come. Over. Three eight to on set five. Fire. Too far back. Too far back. Drop 100. Drop 100. 38 to onset 5. Drop 100. Drop 100. No, no, Sarge. Some of them got through. They're coming on along the road. Bring it in another 100. Quick, Sarge. Over. Marconi, another hundred will bring that artillery right down on top of you. Over. I know, I know. Pull it in, pull it in, hurry. This is 3-8 to onset 5. Drop 100. Fire for effect. Marconi, get out of there. Drop back. You hear me? Drop back. Marconi, can you hear me? Over. Marconi, get out of there. Get out of there, Jerry. Pull back. Marconi, get out of there. You hear me? Get out of there. Over. Heine, take over. Fire until they get close. Then blast them. Where are you going? Follow it. Let me go. Let me go. Look in that tank. Listen, Marconi's out there getting himself killed for you. So Sullivan can get himself another medal. You no good. See what I see? Yeah. Yeah. That was Krauts. Anyone you know? Hold your fire, Danny. Hold it. Hold it. to a great guy. To Sullivan? Yeah, to Sullivan. Had been for Sully, you'd be dead, kid. Dead. I hope he got killed. He didn't do nothing for me. Oh, you don't think the old trooper slugged you just for laughs, do you? An amateur like you'd be dead out there in a minute. It's true, Danny. The sergeant offered his life. Not only for Marconi, but for you. It'll be awfully hard for me to believe. But if he did, then maybe, yeah, maybe you're wrong about the old trooper. But you'll learn. You'll learn. Look! More crowds. They've got their hands up. Maybe. Maybe. It's a Sarge! Sullivan. Trooper Sullivan. Indestructible. Indestructible. All right. Put it back. Put it back. 
Hey, let him check. It's Sullivan. He's all right. And he's got Marconi with him. Marconi? He's all right. Well, what do you know? Look, uh, was got any booze? Schnapps? Huh? That was half beer. Beer and pretzels. Beer? Schnapps? Yeah. Has got any schnapps? Booze? What? No? Beer? Oh, my pal, Sully. Just like I said, indestructible. Tucker, take him over. Yeah. All right, come on. Rouse! Rouse! You had us worried, Sergeant. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure you're not hurt or anything? Not a bit. Good. You should have seen Sullivan. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Croc. Did you ever use this on anybody? And the evil guff. This is Easy Baker Zebra 3-8. To 37, over. This is 37, over. Request the lieutenant to send some men over here to take a bunch of Kraut prisoners off our hands. Over. Did any get past you? Over. Not a one, lieutenant. We stopped them cold. Over. How many men did you lose? Over. Not a man, lieutenant. Not a man. Over. All right, Sully. Out. Thanks, lieutenant. Over and out. Achtung! Rex! Rex! Powered Mats! After knocking the pants off the Krauts, the division returned to Moles for a brief rest. A little of what came to be called liberating. They had hoped to enjoy Moles like they had hoped they'd get a chance to enjoy Paris. But the tankers never did see Paris. They didn't get much chance to enjoy the hospitality of Moles. It's a little difficult to do any serious first-class liberating on a moving tank. And all Spearhead did was move. Hey, soldier, where's Sergeant Sullivan's tank? Uh, over there. Uh, I'll be glad to show you. Hi, Pat. Hi. Dismount. Come on over. OK. Fellas, this is Pat Kane. How do you do? Pretty, ain't she? Hello. Takes pretty pictures, too. And I'm here to get a good picture of your hero. Who, Sergeant Sullivan? He ain't here. But I'm interested in Private Jerry Whitehouse. I'm Private Jerry Whitehouse. All right, throw out your chest. Not many men would call down their own artillery right on top of themselves. Well, I just saw a few crowds coming, and I got a little confused. <laughs> so confused, he stopped a whole regiment. How'd you hear about it? I read the citation recommending him for the Silver Star, written in Sergeant Sullivan's own inimitable style. You mean Sullivan put Marconi in for a medal? Mm-hmm. Danny, just supposing, supposing you're wrong about Sullivan. He wouldn't give credit to his own mother. That may be so, Danny, but he gives it to Marconi. Yeah, you're learning. You're learning. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell me something, Miss Kane. What did Sergeant Sullivan put himself in for? Nothing. As a matter of fact, probably for the first time in his life, Sullivan didn't even mention Sullivan. He should have. He kept Danny from getting killed. And then he went out under fire and brought Marconi in. Knock it off, Ike. Let a guy think, will you? Yeah, let a guy think. Let him think. You know something you saw? You saw because the sergeant's trying to make a combat soldier out of you. Personally, I think it's a waste of time. Holy old macro! Look at that! That's the granddaddy of the 88. Oh, man, man. Look, look at that muzzle brake. It's like a German tiger. Five inches of armor right where you need the worst. Brother, what a baby carriage. Baby carriage? Yep. This is one of them there new 90s we've been hearing about. Lieutenant Rawson, sir. What, Sergeant? How would I go about getting one of these here tanks? I'm afraid you're going to have to speak to Ike. I? You mean me? That's right. Listen to this. To PFC George Eisenhower, also known as Ike and General. Care of Captain Horner, C Company, Task Force Matthews. Dear General, this is for real. Good luck. From the commanding General, 3rd Armored Division. 
Get away, boys. You bother me. Back off. Back off. Stop scratching on my property. <laughs> ain't she pretty? Ain't she sweet? Hey, I told you, Lamb Chuck. I told yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You talk to the general. Uh, Lieutenant, you mean to say that Ike here's got the say-so on this here tank? That seems to be the general's idea. Go ahead. Ask me. Well, uh, I suppose you want to drive. I might. Well, let's see. Danny's quitting, and that means Tucker's gonna need a new assistant. You've been shaping up pretty good lately. All right, you made her deal. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Sarge. I didn't make that quitting official. I was just beefing. A guy's got a right to beef. Well, oh, gee, Sarge, I, I wouldn't want to wreck up a swell combination like you got. There ain't no combination so good it can't be replaced. Well, anyway, I gotta stick around and take care of Lemchek. Who's gonna take care of who? Now, be careful, Lemchek. Mike's liable to tell the general on you. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, what time we shoving off? Within the hour, Sergeant. All right, let's get our gear aboard this thing. Come on, move. Load up. What you waiting for? Did you hear me? I said, get your gear aboard here. Sure, Sully. On September 4th, 1944, the Spearhead drove on from Mons. Four task forces raced to beat the enemy to Fortress Germany. Still far out in front, still on their own, Spearhead tankers sped through cities where liberated Belgians mobbed their liberators. Charleroi, Namur, Liège. In 18 days, Spearhead tankers had stabbed from the Seine to the grinning dragon's teeth outside the iron gates of Germany. Now dirty, hungry, exhausted, short of ammunition, running out of gasoline, a hundred tank crews still in action out of more than 400 who launched the breakthrough at San Lo. Tankers set themselves for the first invasion of Germany since Napoleon's time. The night of September 11th in the Aachen Einaten Forest, spearhead commanders poured over photographs and maps of the Siegfried Line, the most powerful defense fortress ever built by man. Though the tankers were smarter, the job didn't get easier. The closer they got to the Siegfried Line, the tougher the resistance became. As German artillery and roadblocks denied them the roads, Spearhead's tanks took to the fields and woods, probing, feeling, searching for a soft spot, seeking that one place to get the spear between the ribs, that one place where a little breakthrough would be punched into a big wide one that would become the express highway that could end only in Berlin. And as usual, it was Sullivan out in front. Sullivan nosing for a fight. Achtung, Achtung! Amerikanischen Panzer in meinem Sektor des Siegfried. Ja, Mitte des Sektor, 2000 Meter. Engineers, move up here. Move forward and set those charges. 2,000 meter. Achtung, Achtung. Langsam. Feuer. The artillery zeroed in on us. Got it. Us. The 
You think we'll pull back? Somebody better do something. All right, Tucker. Move out. What are you up to? I'm gonna put this here new tank across that there line, Lieutenant. with me. Tiny, scout machine gun. Traverse left. Enemy machine gun. Sully spotted it. Platoon, one round. Fire! Route 88, Panther tank, right front. Fire, Heine. That a boy, Heine. One round of R90, and look at her burn. Platoon, lay a couple of rounds in that crowd tank for good measure. Fire! Artillery observing that tree. Halfway up the tree. Yes, sir. Fire two rounds of HE in there. All set, sir. Fire. Nice shooting. Their artillery should slack off now. Let's get the champagne. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not in Germany yet. What do you mean? We gotta wait till all these tanks go through. You mean all these tanks? Yeah. Well, come on! Let's go! Move it! On the double!
You in charge of this T2? No, sir, Sergeant George Eisenhower. Sergeant? It's Ike. He got a promotion. And boy, is he rough. Where's Lemchek? At Battalion A. My boss went down to see him. Can you change his fart plug? I hope so. Well, then get at it. Get on that there tank there. Sergeant Sullivan? Yeah? Lieutenant Rossum said we'll move out in 15 minutes. Thank you, Sergeant. All right, come on, Danny. Let's share the joy. We gotta wait for Heine. Why do we gotta wait for Heine? Where is he? He went into Stahlberg. Said it was pretty important. Take me to Stahlberg. Hurry up, will you, Sarge? I'm dying of thirst. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, relax, will you? Danny. What? Let me hold it. Where are you going? No place. I just want to hold it until it gets back. Will you stay right here? Right here. Go ahead. Let him hold it. Okay. Don't open it. No! That's long enough. Thanks. Amerikaner. Was wollen Sie? Ja, was wollen Sie hier? Ich bin Heinrich, euer Enkel. Ist das möglich? Großmutter, Großvater, ich bin Heinrich. Heinrich. Mein Sohn. Oh, oh, Heinrich, Heinrich. Oh, Gott sei Dank. Heinrich, Heinrich. Ich habe ein Bild von Mutter mit uns. Das ist das Letzte. Heinrich. Fürchtet euch nicht. Er ist mein Freund. I tell them, don't be afraid. You are my friend. This is Sergeant Sullivan, my grandfather and grandmother. Grandfather and grandmother? Yes. They are why it has been so important for me to reach Germany. I lived here as a boy. I was afraid they might be dead before I could find them. But God has been good. It sure is a pleasure to meet you folks. You got a... Wonderful grandson. And believe me, I know. When an American reaches the hand, reaches, it's all good. I tell them when an American shakes hands with you, everything is going to be all right. Herzlich willkommen. Herzlich willkommen. Ich will an mich. Ja. And you can say that again, Heine. Hello, puppy. You want to come with us? You come on with us. You want to come, puppy dog? Come on. I guess he don't understand English. Ask him in German. Uh, uh, oh, come and see here. <laughs> come on. Come on over here. What's your name? There he is. There's Sully. There's Sully. He's back. This is it. This is it. I'll get the bottle. I'll get it. I'll get the bottle. Look at that found. He's all right. Sergeant, Joe Davis planned for us to drink this when we got to Germany. 
Well, we're all here now, and... Well, thanks to you, Sully. Here's your cup. Thanks, Danny. Heine? Thanks. Somebody stole it. There's a crook in the outfit. Danny, I can't find a thing. Hey! Hey! Wait for Tucker! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Well, to Sergeant Joe Davis. Sergeant Sullivan. Yes, Lieutenant. I hate to lose a good platoon, Sergeant. Captain Horner and I have decided to recommend you for promotion to lieutenant. Hey, congratulations, Sully. A toast for it, to Sully. Lieutenant Sullivan. Sullivan, Sullivan. Uh, just a minute. <laughs> lieutenant. Yes, Sully. I suppose this means the usual thing. I'll be transferred to another platoon and a, a new company? That's the Army way, Sully. You guys are real happy, ain't you? You think you're good enough now to get along without Sullivan, don't you? Well, you can. I've still got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. I'm still the head, and you're still the arms and legs. And you'll move when I tell you to move. And you ain't going to move when I don't tell you. Anything you say. We'll get through if we're lucky. What do you mean, if we're lucky? I'm Sullivan, and I'm still making the luck for this whole outfit. Now, come on, let's get moving. Come on, roll. Come on. Oh, Come on. Let's go. Get on that tank. Roll. All right, Tucker, wind them up. Get ready to roll. All right, roll them. 